All right, hello, beautiful humans. Welcome back to another episode at the Bitcoin Stoa. As a reminder, this is a community funder project. So if you enjoy listening, you can support our work by sending some sats to the QR code on our website at bitcoinstoa.com. And you can also stream sats using a Bitcoin wallet that has a podcast feature. Uh, I currently use the Breeze wallet, find that it's a great experience. And I'm experimenting with uh, the Fountain app too, which has V4V splits now. So you can actually split the revenue, uh, the sats that are coming in, which is kind of cool. So current Moscow time is 2.25.67 at 7.34.120. And with all that said, it is my honor to introduce Albert to the STOA. And we're going to have a conversation about the Bitcoin hostel project that he's working on in Portugal. So Albert, welcome to the STOA. Hi, Nick. Thanks for the invite. You're very welcome, man. Thank you for taking the time out of your day. I'm very excited to hear about your project um, and to sort of share it with the Bitcoin world and the Bitcoin Stoa community. Uh, but before we get into your hostel project, I'd love to hear your Bitcoin story. It's, uh, you know, it gives me context for who someone is and their journey to, to Bitcoin and where they are now. And so maybe, you know, in as much detail or length as you want to tell it, when and how did Bitcoin come across your life path and maybe include some of the more significant moments leading up to where you are today? Um, so go for it. Sure. sure. So um, as a kid, I was always really interested in, in economics, which is kind of a weird hobby for a 16 year old. Um, <laughs> so uh, I, I came really from this economic and political um, um, part and I love to read newspapers and um, I was actually I'm coming from a kind of a divided city and, um, you know, Berlin is used to be East uh, communist and West, it was more capitalistic. And my family is more from the capitalistic part and we moved into the socialistic part. And so I kind of got to know both sides. And um, since my dad was an entrepreneur, I saw him work a lot. And um, I was always interested in uh, how, how can you make money and how actually, how does money work and how does economics work? And um, I had a lot of friends that were obviously raised in a whole different system with socialism and you have to apply for government, you know, subsidies or whatever you want. Um, and I always disagreed with this. Um, and then in the beginning, obviously, I never heard about Bitcoin because, you know, I was a kid and Bitcoin probably never got invented by then. Um, <laughs> but uh, with the time, I, I also couldn't, I'm not, I'm not such a technical person. So I heard of Bitcoin, I, I don't remember the, the, the exact year, but uh, I heard of Bitcoin pretty early and I, you know, I, I never bought or I never did much research about it. But in I, I, I knew that I liked it, but I didn't get in and I, I, I forgot about it for years. And then actually I, I heard my brother talk about it and uh older or younger brother my, my my older brother talked about it and uh he, he was at the time living in mexico and he came to visit me and uh, i remember how he told me uh, he invited me to the restaurant and uh i i asked him can i order everything he invited me and i asked him can i order everything yeah you and gotta take said, advantage well, of that me... big brother that big brother yeah. Uh, relationship right yeah 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 and he said well let me check the bitcoin price <laughs> and I'm like, what the fuck? You, you, you have Bitcoin? <laughs> and then we talked a little bit and uh, probably, yeah, he, he got me into it. Um, and that was probably by the, the first time I bought was in 2017. Uh, yeah. And I managed to buy the top. <laughs> Dude, and if you I, buy every top since Bitcoin's inception, you're sitting real pretty today. So it's like if you zoom out, every top is, ends up being a good buy. One question yeah. I have for you is, do you remember what he said? that got you like what was was there any specific thing that he said that really orange pilled you and then the other question i have is how long between when you had dinner with your brother and when you first bought bitcoin what was the time period like did you instantly do it were you straight well, up orange pilled or did you do a bit of research and then buy well actually i i don't think i really got orange pilled by him i i think i already had the idea that um, money should be limited and you cannot um, give it to a government that should just be able to you know, manipulate it in a way that yeah. 
maybe a small group might profit out of it, but the majority. It's too, it's too much power. No one should have that amount of power, right? With money, because yeah, yeah, it gets yeah, abused I mean, eventually. Yeah, that's ridiculous. It's like with the, with all sort of things. I mean, having a monopoly, especially on the most important thing of the economy, is kind of is it's, it's stupid. I mean, it's, <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's uh, also dangerous, and it's also like it's um, yeah, it's just a bad thing. And I kind of knew it all the time. I thought about gold a lot because that's uh, also a different solution to the problem. And I kind of like Bitcoin was not easy to buy. And I kind of dismissed it because I'm not, as I said, I'm not such a technical person. And I think this dinner with my brother um, gave Bitcoin some sort of um, seriousness. Yeah. Like I, it was more legitimate because you're fair. I mean, social. Yeah. Social vetting is so huge, right? If you hear about Bitcoin from a stranger versus if you hear about it from a close family member, that's a different touch point, right? Yeah, and having yeah. a touch point from um, a fa an, an immediate family member, especially an older sibling, I find. Like when I talk to my brothers about Bitcoin, I think me being the older sibling and them being, you know, there's a relationship there where you kind of look up yeah. for some wisdom from your older siblings. So, yeah. yeah. And I think that's kind of like the first time I really heard from a living person that's you know not from youtube or whatever right uh, from a living person that i know pretty well that um, he owns bitcoin that's kind of like get, got me into the idea wow that's that's really something that is happening and it, it works and uh, so you, you order everything on the phone menu. and <laughs> you can pay with it if you want and you can do whatever and it's not just a theory yeah and did you order did you end up ordering everything on the menu what was the verdict <laughs> i ate it's a hell of a big steak <laughs> nice. and yeah cool so so you get into bitcoin at the top that's in you know would you say 2017 and then how has your how has this journey unfolded for you since you first got some skin in the game until like where we are today april 2022 what are the what's the path there um, well, the path obviously is, um, I, I hope a lot, well, I think a lot of people have done it and I also have to admit that I have done it and I went into, into shit coins and I thought I should make some, some rite of passage, I think so, some, some money. Yeah. And, um, but actually I also did a pretty, I think, a uh, good thing because I found out that, um, certain exchanges have a higher price and others have a lower price. So I managed to buy for low and sell for high. And that was a, a way to get more Bitcoin. But I also did a lot of, you know, shit coins. And um, yeah, in, in the end, I think you have to get wrecked to understand that there is, there is it just makes no sense to yep. reinvent, you know, the fiat system, which is basically what, you know, proof of stake is and like other coins, I mean, they the meme coins and they are like, I mean, it's just ripoffs. And I guess even the founders know that. And so um, this is how I slowly transitioned into like from the knowledge to that the money we have at the moment is not right to shit coins to there's actually just one valuable digital thing and it can only be proof of work. It can only be the way it got invented by an anonymous person that um, kind of made it in the in the dark and no one knows who it was. This is the only possible way to have a decentralized money for the people. And at the moment, I really believe that if you have other coins, if you if you understand what how crypto works, and you still have crypto, you're fuck, like you're doing harm to Bitcoin. And yeah, crypto is the attack on Bitcoin, I think. Like proof of stake is the attack on proof of work. Yeah. Crypto is the attack on Bitcoin, right? Like literally all the FUD from Bitcoin comes from one or two places. Legacy institutions, which are all being replaced by Bitcoin, whether that be accounting or nation state or all the above. Um, yeah. And then the other half, which I think is actually leading the way in terms of the marketing effort of FUD is crypto. To try it because in order to to sell your shit coin you have to lie about bitcoin and say why bitcoin has a limitation that your shit coin fixes and so yeah. i agree uh you know i think there's like an ethical quandary where i know people who know shit coins are shit coins and they mm -hmm. say explicitly i'm only in shit coins to trade it 
to buy yeah. more Bitcoin. And it's like, well, number one, you're taking on a lot of risk because you're assuming yeah. you know more than all the other people in crypto, which you might. But also it's like, how do you feel about making money off people who are going to get wrecked? Like there's yeah. an ethical element there. So I agree. Get rid of your shit coins, buy Bitcoin and live a yeah. low time preference life. It's so much better. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, it's also... Um, I think Bitcoin teaches you so many things of, uh, you know, reducing also um, consumption and uh, lower, um, uh, like have a different time preference. And um, it's just, you learn that you, you want to have less and also financially yeah. you want to have, I mean, just one asset is it's Bitcoin. I mean, sure, you can have like a, maybe a house or, you know, a car if you want to, but I'm not like, People understand nowadays, especially Bitcoiners understand that we are not in for Lumbos and we are not in to go to go to the moon or whatever. We're in here to change the fucking world. We want yeah. to make, or at least uh, that's what we want to do at Bitcoin Hostel. We want to educate a lot of uh, people and we want to make them understand that it is money from the people for the people. And it frees them for from 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 the current uh, uh, uh monetary system we have at the moment and I, I'm, I'm not like I, I know also in the financial crisis in 2008 also Canada was having a huge impact um on it but in Europe people couldn't get like in southern Europe people couldn't get their own money from the banks they, the, yeah, the banks crazy. told them the banks told them uh that they can only get 50 euros a day that's I mean that's robbery that's absurd yeah, yeah. that's, that's robbery. that. I mean, it literally, it's slavery and theft. That's what fiat is. And, yeah. you know, in Canada, we might not have been that effective with that. But, like, I helped truckers receive Bitcoin donations and nice. immediately had no property rights in Canada. So it's like yeah. we have different, you know, people are getting their bank accounts shut down for sending $50 to law-abiding peaceful citizens asserting the right to protest. Like, there's some, yeah. there's some fucked up shit going on here, too, which I think people are more aware of now, which is good. Um, what, what is your ex, uh, what, what did you experience with the truckers? Uh, have you talked to a lot of them uh, that did not know what Bitcoin is, and then you kind of orange built them? Yeah, I mean, I, the problem is right now I still have so there's a class action lawsuit of people trying to essentially sue me because I helped with the trucker convoy. So I can't talk about it yet. Um, mm -hmm. Like, yeah, dude, some crazy like. Put it this way people were very scared of bitcoin this is the proof so Crazy. i can't talk about it now but i will tell the whole story in full when i'm like free of all this legal bullshit. um cool. maybe i'll come to portugal and tell it to you in person um awesome. yeah that'd be nice but but i mean at the end of the day so let's get back to your story so you go through here you're building your conviction you go through shitcoin phase i noticed on the uh bitcoin hostel page that you come from an architecture background so you know like um maybe now is a good place to kind of transition into your project. So from what I understand, you're creating, uh, you're, you're crowdfunding, building and designing a Bitcoin hostel in Portugal. So yeah. I guess one question I have is, where did you go from Germany to Portugal? Like, uh, mm -hmm. how long have you been living in Portugal? What made you go there if you're living there right now? What made you choose Portugal as the hostel location? And where does your architecture background fit into this project? Because I looked at the website, but I, I, I want to hear it from you. So when did you go from Germany to Portugal? And, um, you know, what made you want to do this? Like, the big thing I want to know is the why. Why are you putting energy yeah. into this? What, what potential vision do you see from this? Uh, and then maybe tell us a bit about the project and how it's unfolding. Yeah, cool. Um, so at the moment, I'm not yet in Portugal. I, I, I still live in Berlin and I, I still uh, work in my fiat job, actually. Um, and it's, uh, our client is uh, the government, okay. ironically. <laughs> but th this probably gave me, the, like, you know, the last push after Corona. Uh, this is probably the, the, the last push um, to, to make me understand, well, I have to do something. I'm not going to work for this bullshit anymore. Yeah. And um, I want to work at, uh, at something that I believe that makes the world a better place. Um, That's so exciting. Yeah. You know how many times I hear that from Bitcoiners and how much hope that gives me? <laughs> that yeah. like, people are young people with a hopeful future who have a vision for what meaningful work can be are actually taking action and doing it. Like that's yeah. some inspiring shit, dude. Yeah, I mean, the, the world is full of negativity and it's um, uh, people say it's going down, it's going down. I actually am so fucking optimistic. Same. about the future um 
we have a tool to make the world amazing. I mean, we have problems in the world, but there is something that can solve it. Um, and it's not a theory. And the, the more stories I hear, the, the, the more convinced I get. I mean, I'm fucking addicted to Bitcoin. I watch <laughs> videos too. every fucking day. I read about it. I'm on Twitter. Yeah. And, you know, it's Bitcoin all fucking days for, for, for years now. Yeah. Um, so, so Bitcoin is my um, um, sort of my hobby at the moment. I love traveling um, and I'm an architect. I studied architecture for five years. Um, and uh, now I'm an architect. I have uh, four years of working experience. And now is the time to combine all of those three things. And um, I, I want to do it in Europe because I, I understood I have been traveling really far away as, as well, like in, in, you know, in Australia, which has like uh, 20 hours flights to, to get there. And it's, you know, it's, it's too far away. Um, and I could also go to El Salvador and I, I want to support everyone that goes to El Salvador to build something because I think it's also necessary. But here in Europe, we also need um, Bitcoin hubs and bitter, yeah. Bitcoin citadels. And uh, I think people should fight for it. And a lot of people, also Bitcoiners, are kind of like pessimistic about the uh, about the European Union and, and in which direction they, they they go because they have a lot of proposals to you know forbid you know wallets or forbid proof of work or you know as, as you said before it's going into like they they want to support more kind of like Ethereum and they talk about you know uh, the, the the environmental impacts of of Bitcoin and it's so so bad and whatever and I think just like my brother did uh, when I first heard a real world uh, use case for Bitcoin and I I, I want to do it in a um, in a environment that's fun and in an environment where you know a lot of people when they travel they are open minded they want to get to know new cultures they want to uh, experience new people, new foods, new religions. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. People come back as, as hippies sometime um, doing yoga all day. And I mean, they, they have kind of an open mindset. And um, in this hostel, we want to create something that you have a hell of a good of time. And uh, I, I've, I've, I've seen so many amazing hostels. And I can assure you that I'm pretty sure that I know how to make it a great place. And um, yeah, it, it should be kind of like a, a hub for people to, to have fun at. And Bitcoin is uh, it's not just, you know, a name. It is something that you can uh, live. It's a kind of, it's lifestyle. Yeah. It's uh, maybe you, you, you also eat better. You have a longer time horizon. You uh, consume less. Uh, maybe you you are nicer to people. Maybe you have value in life, and you you can not do it. Um, you don't have to do it like in a heavy way to teach people and to kind of force it to them. But to show people, you know, in a fun way how it works. Um, you know, we intend to only accept uh, Bitcoin payments, so no fiat, no euro, no beautiful. Um, and 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 uh, we'll find an easy way to uh, to to also. Um, teach people that maybe don't have Bitcoin yet, but we'll put an ATM there. They download the fucking app. It takes thirty seconds, and then uh, they have Bitcoin, and then they can pay. And it's 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 really fast. And um, if if we create a fun place to memorize for them, they'll spread the world around the world. They go home and yeah. they they tell their friends, "Man, I've been to this amazing place." And we had amazing conversations over there. We had live band over there. We went surfing. We had like there were nice surfing teachers, and um, we got dr fucking drunk in the evening. And uh, I had sex in the dorm dormitorium. And uh, you know what? Everyone paid with Bitcoin, and everyone was fucking talking about Bitcoin all the time. And, Dude, sign uh, me up right now. This is this yeah. Is, I completely agree, and I, I think you know it from the standpoint of you designing this project end to end having the architecture background and understanding the dynamic of how does the how do humans interact with space and the opportunity of being able to engineer from scratch a space with a full intentionality of how that space will be used and like purpose build it based on function 
that's a really exciting project to me. And I, I couldn't yeah. agree more. You know, the best hostels I've been to in the world created the best container to have a super memorable experience on yeah. multiple dimensions, whether it was the food or the people, you know, like that hostel attracted me for some reason. And so it self-selected people that are like me that have the same values that want to move that value community that want to have good meals for like three hours and, and talk shit and get drunk yeah. or smoke weed, yeah. whatever. And yeah. the idea that you could create a container whereby someone comes in maybe with little to no Bitcoin knowledge, Mm -hmm. can have one of the most memorable life, memorable experiences of their lives fueled yeah. by Bitcoin on all fronts with Bitcoiners. Yeah. They will leave there and they will be an, a, a node in their own community. They will tell everyone they know, like give them a reason to tell everyone they know about what happened yeah. and make sure that it's you know built on Bitcoin. Bitcoin is what can fuel this. And I, I think it's a really yeah, cool idea. That, that's, that's kind of like, uh, I think something we need to make people understand that there's also a, a, a big difference between, um, you know, crypto or between uh, like, um, you know, just some get rich quick scheme or, you know, things they see in the media um, because it's a real life experience. And yeah. uh, that's how, how you, I guess, um, memorize, um, yeah, memorize it in the best way. Um, and yeah, I, I, so I'm, I'm working at the moment still at this Fiat job. I'm going to finish this project by the end of the year. And I thought about it of like, when should I get um, public with it? Yep. And I thought, well, maybe I, I should wait until I bought the, the land and then build the hostel and, and then maybe made it make a Twitter account. But actually, I think the strongest asset Bitcoin has is actually the community. Yes, I, th I think Bitcoin is so fucking strong, not only because of the of, of the, the great uh, algorithm or the nodes or the miners or whatever. I think the strongest asset are the people that support yeah. it. You know, the, like um, I'm bullish Michael on Bitcoiners, Stel even more Michael bullish Stelers than I am on Bitcoin. I'm bullish on Bitcoin. Cyber Hornets. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think it's a good move telling people about it at its inception, because what you do then is you allow people to transparently see the journey, right? Like you can you involve them in the creation process you will create something way better because you'll get a bunch of suggestions um, yeah. and people will be able to have a deeper connection by seeing this from infancy to realization and see how the vision is actually yeah. like being put into reality. So I think it's a really good idea to start it right away. You know, maybe you're not putting a huge amount of energy into it, but I think involving people through the process, you will build a community such that when the, when the hostel is ready to take people, You'll have a turnkey group of people who want to sign up to you literally have a sign up list of who wants to come if you do this in a way that's very transparent very authentic and aligns yeah. with the bitcoin core ethos because you know i've been to portugal portugal is a beautiful place i went to yeah. uh, lisbon porto and i went to faro which is in the algarve area so nice. why did you pick portugal um and do you have any idea of like what are your constraints i have so many questions but let's start here <laughs> why portugal where in portugal and you know at the end of this year you said you're wrapping up your fiat mining uh gig and what does the next phase look like in terms yeah. of financing the project finding land so why portugal and then what's okay. the roadmap from here moving forward maybe from a zoomed out lens sure so uh portugal is um a, a place that i personally like to travel to um i've also been to several cities and i love the their culture i love their food i love um, the, the weather condition, you know, I'm from Germany, so it's a little bit colder over here. Um, and I can, uh, I can relate to that. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I, th I think it's just a beautiful place, which is the most important um, thing. The second most important thing is also um, that prices are pretty low at the moment. Um, you can get a piece of land uh, for, I'm not going to say almost nothing, but compared to for example berlin that's yeah, like much peanuts. cheaper it's yeah. much cheaper um and the third thing is that the the law is sort of bitcoin friendly um you don't have yeah. to pay taxes yeah there's no capital gains on bitcoin correct yeah. there's no there's no capital gains on bitcoin and uh, also in general taxes are pretty low and you can find ways to i'm not sure if it's smart to say but there is legal ways to not yeah. pay taxes for, for 10 years um, because you can have like, a, you know, it's a it's a bit of a complicated structure you need, but 
it is legal. So you can play by the rules and find the loopholes. I know Portugal is doing yeah. a lot to try and attract businesses. So they have very favorable treatment for businesses yeah. going to Portugal in terms of corporate taxes. Like I've looked into this quite a bit too. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Portugal to me makes sense. Yeah, it's a, it's it's those three things. It's a beautiful country, be be beautiful people, nice foods, nice weather. Uh, it's low prices, and the the Bitcoin laws are are pretty uh, all right for for Europe. Um, so that is that are some good conditions to, um, I think, build the hostel. Um, yeah. What location? So, where in where in uh, where in Portugal do you want to do it? Um, probably it's going to be Algarve. We're going to look around uh, all over the place. But um, I, I am also, I've posted it on, on my website and on Twitter. Uh, we bought a camper, me and my girlfriend. Nice. And with the camper, we're going to tour around. And, uh, you know, I think you have to take your time to really understand yep. how the place works and what, what's, the, what's the best place to go and where's the best prices. You, you can negotiate really good with the people over there. And sometimes um they have you know signs on the wall with a number and you just call and say well hi i'm here um mm -hmm. and yeah i think that's that's a good way to get to get a, get a good price and get a good location um and yeah algarve is probably the, the most amazing surfing area or one of the best surfing areas in the world um and uh, i'm not an expert but i like surfing and uh, I, I would like to do it even more i want to do i also want to be uh, a little bit more in the in the nature outside i love gardening i love you know uh creating my own uh dinners and uh, cooking and uh, you know being more, more outside connected with nature and i think algarve is a really good um area to do so um now uh, as, as i said uh the, the, uh, on, on my website, I put a list of you know steps I want to take. So first step is to get a camper. Second step is uh, get into uh, get on Twitter and you know talk a little bit about it. And I was fucking amazed by the feedback I got. Um, within a month, I got like a thousand followers. Within like uh, now, it's not even two months, but I'm almost at two two thousand. Uh, two thousand. Perfect. And uh, Dude, what yeah, you're doing is appeals to a lot of people like it is, I, yeah, yeah. It's exponential it, also, because once you, you know, I really think getting people curious to be involved with the process of how this unfolds. Right. Yeah. And even if you, I think with, with Twitter, like I'm, I ran a health network, it was on Instagram, but it's same social media kind of vibe in terms of like, how do you build an authentic following of people? Number one, you have to be giving them value. Um, and number two, I think consistency is important. So like, even if you set out like, I'm going to post once a week and I'm going to give a little update and you literally just say update number one, here's where things are at update number two, like not super frequent, but letting people know context of like, okay, this is where we are. Yeah. Um, even like a percentage, right? It's almost like a progress bar. It's like, okay, we're at 10%. This is what I'm doing. We're at 20%, hundred yeah. percent is we're open. People yeah. need to start coming. I would be curious to follow that just from the standpoint yeah. of like witnessing your journey to create this yeah. thing, which appeals to me exactly a lot. That, um, that, that's that's really the idea and you man nick you, you you cannot believe what the fucking response of the people were i mean amazing. i got private messages from people t telling me they want to quit their job to fucking come work for me i got people go. to uh you know just tell me that what what a fucking great uh project this is i got people yeah. that told me uh, they, they, they want they have ideas or people that uh, can offer some land and people that want to offer like um, some, you know, advice on the language on the areas. Um, I got invited to like, uh, I think now it's the sixth or seventh podcast. I mean, it's, it's fucking powerful. People don't really like, they, they fucking love the idea and they give me so much um, support. And then, uh, yeah, the third step would be then to kind of see if um, also I get financial support. And I did a a little test run and I, I was asking for a million satoshis um and we got it in a in a week so <laughs> amazing <laughs> i mean it's, it's it's just a test run and it's not going to change um you, you know the the whole project significantly but it shows me that people are putting fucking real money into it and i think yeah um yeah from a million I, we got to two million and um you know at some point we get a bitcoin and, and so on. And that's um, helping us finance to pay for a good 
a piece of land and most importantly also build a uh, like in a good location and build a good house on it like build a good structure where people are going to be able to have a lot of fun and then also it should be a, a place that does not cost that much because i mean it's it's called hostel for a reason it's not a hotel um it is for for everyday people just for people that like to travel with a backpack and um in my experience there's also the best places to to, to go to um and yeah it's it should be open for everyone so we we're, we're gonna have uh probably that's how that's my idea but um i'm gonna say next what's uh, uh how, how, like how we are gonna do it my idea is to have like uh eight uh, um uh, two eight people dormitoriums um probably two uh, four bedrooms and like two uh, or two suites or something private rooms um so at the beginning it's really um small um but it's important to have like uh you know get people together and uh, uh have like a close close environment with everyone and i think also it's a, it's a good combination of tra travelers and um you know people that traveling as a couple or, or you know people that just want to have a private room um, but still want to get in touch with people and uh that's the idea amazing that sounds great and i'm very yeah. uh what is your um in terms of what's in your brain right now and obviously this is going to change many times over but you know i always am curious from uh you know our friends who are architects and i love to hear or or not all of them are architects but a lot of them are into design my brother specifically loves designing homes yeah. he just loves engineering spaces um yeah. what is the theme of of what you're envisioning um yeah for for this like is it like just as a and i won't hold you to any of this but i'd love to know like if you could describe a high level vision of a theme of, of what this is going to look like and the, the really unique elements that are going through your brain right now, yeah. um, how would you convey that? So, um, you know, during my studies, I had the experience that a lot of people were working, a lot of students were working on the same project and they came out with whole different solutions, whole different designs. Um, and I think this is really the value of uh, of universities um, to have a whole crowd that designing something that's going into different directions. And I think we can also use this power. And that's why I said we want to crowd design it as well. Mm, um, cool. That from every place in the world, they can send proposals. And the proposals can be very, very different just to um, name maybe three ideas three specific ideas it could be made out of uh, local materials wood for example um to be built fast um, be environmentally friendly um a second uh, design idea could be well let's make it out of stone so it's gonna last like bitcoin for ages like uh let let get let's get inspired by you know uh roman architecture and not yeah, make this, this 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 um you know modernistic shit um make it something that is really robust and will never ever fall apart unless people are gonna fucking burn it or whatever um <laughs> even rocks you can't burn that shit <laughs> yeah yeah um and a third option could even be uh container houses container yeah. houses inspired by uh miners in case the um the law is going to change we can just rebuild Pick the whole, up and take, take, take our containers and go to another yeah. place that's that's like three really connected bitcoin ideas and i think there are a lot of more solutions to this and that's why we believe that we want to make a place where the whole community can go and that's why i think the whole community can also participate in in designing it i'm obviously okay. i'm obviously going to be the one that is uh like physically and building it and also making all the details for uh, for how to build it but um i think even people that have no idea of how architecture work works uh, they can send them some ideas even if it's not even a sketch it could even be like a, some, some words like you know you should do um also uh one, one guy told me you should also do some co-working space in it and I think, you know, that's how you get to a good result that is um, being used by a lot of people. 
And Agreed. And even just like green roofs, the idea of maximizing the growable space so that you can grow yeah. gardens, so that you can, yeah. you know, take advantage of all these things. And, I, you know, this whole notion of uh, barn raising, right? Like the way they used to do it, some, someone in the community needs to build a barn, everyone goes and helps build the barn, right? I yeah. think the Amish community still do this. You could easily do something like that where you're like, okay, here's the construction timeline. Yeah. If anyone comes to help out, we'll feed you yeah. and we'll have tents. And you, yeah. I, I wouldn't be surprised if you get, I'll come, you get a fleet of Bitcoiners <laughs> coming in to provide manual labor. You might have yeah. some skilled labor. There might be a mason that is a Bitcoiner that's like, yeah, I'll go help you for two yeah. weeks or a carpenter. Yeah, I yeah. think there's so much creative freedom with this, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I even got like uh, already messages from people. One guy uh, said, yeah, I'm an electrician. Do you need my help? I, I'm, I could come immediately. <laughs> Um, and yeah, I think this is also something that is, um, uh, yeah, people tell me we inspire them to also make projects like this. Yep. Um, but I get so much support from the people that like, you know, they, Bitcoiners, I feel like are loving to give and are loving to build. And it's they're incredibly it's, generous. It's, and they're, here's the thing about Bitcoiners, they take action. Like, it's not yeah. just people who are saying, oh, there's these problems, boohoo, it's terrible. Yeah, yeah. It's like, no, 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 we're going to identify the problem. We're not going to yeah. sit there and just dwell on it. We're going to actually do shit that solves it. And we're going to yeah. work, we're going to like take action, right? I think yeah. the corners are very generous. Yeah. If they, if something you're doing resonates with them and they want to support it, they will. And they're also action oriented where they'll actually like take action. They'll contribute to code or they'll contribute ideas or they'll contribute sats or they'll contribute effort. And, yeah. uh, the amount of support you're getting is a direct indicator of how much you're tapping into the Bitcoin community and yeah. something that they feel is giving value. So it's like yeah. all this support you're getting is not a mistake. It's because you're doing something that people are like, I want to get behind that. I'm I feel, being inspired. I want to send that love back. So yeah, I feel I feel overwhelmed. I want to want to say thank you for every one of them. Um, obviously, we are at a very early stage, um, but we can already do things and, um, you know, test drive how, 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 how certain things could um, then uh, continue. For, for example, we just had a logo competition of, and I told people, yeah, just send them some sketches. It can be with a, you know, just a pen and you don't have to do like a finished logo or something, just some sketches. And I think we got about like more than 50 proposals. Wow. That's all amazing. sorts of, all sorts of designs, like people did it with, you know, Illustrator, but They've also done it like in a, just a fucking pencil sketch to five <laughs> seconds awesome. or something. But every everything was in there. And in the end, uh, uh, some Venez Venezuelan guy or girl, I'm, I'm not even sure, um, won. And I, I, I really liked uh, his or her design. Um, and she got uh, 300,000 Satoshis, which is for a Venezuelan person also, I think, a lot of money for like That's half an hour. Huge. That's huge. Work. And so we're also giving, trying to give something back to the community. And um, yeah, we would intend to continue. Amazing. Now, in terms of preliminary timelines, like where do you see, so we're 22 right now. This is like preliminary foundational planning. Mm -hmm. Where do you see things happening? Like 23, 24, 25, mm -hmm. as a high level prediction, where, where would you say, you would place the milestones in those years. Like I want to mental map this so that I include it in my life. <laughs> it so, yeah, um, I think it is always good to have ambitious plans. Yes, um, I agree. I I now have this contract with the uh, with my boss, and uh, I, I signed specifically for this one project. And this one project um, is gonna end this year, in the end of this year. So um, probably it's gonna be December. And then probably in January, I'm going to start uh, going to Portugal and looking for a good location. Now, I cannot say how long this is going to take, but I hope sure. it's, it's not going to take more than three months. Okay. And then we are in March. And uh, once we got, um, yeah, once we got the, the, uh, the location, we, we bought everything, we we're immediately going to start the um, to publish the DWGs or the you know measurements and uh, uh, location details and uh, you know orientation to the sun and you mm -hmm. know information around the area and and photos and stuff like this and immediately start the design competition. Um, 
and usually those computations especially if it goes for for smaller buildings they're not going to take more than a couple of uh, weeks or so and uh then we have to apply for the permits also there it's it's kind of unsure how long it's going to take in, in in portugal could take long time could take a uh, little less let's see how uh, you know the person that is working on this permit uh how fast he or she is give them um, some stats maybe it'll happen quicker <laughs> yeah yeah come on I'm download this app i have a, uh, have a present <laughs> yeah i included and, a uh, seed uh, phrase in the proposal yeah, but there might or might not be money in here. <laughs> it's just some words it's no yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> and uh so that yeah, brings us then, to mid 23 yeah. so by mid 23 let's say may 23 you've got the land You've done a design competition. You have a pretty good idea of what you're going to build. And then yeah. the permitting process, let's give that, be generous and give it two months. So we're in like yeah. July. Yeah. And then I guess the build, like I think in Canadian terms, so we have a build season here because you don't build shit in the middle of winter. But over yeah. there, there's it's probably not a consideration. It's like when you're ready to build and you have the permits, you have the money, you just start building. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you can you can build immediately. And I try, I, I try to make it end of next year, half a year of building is ambitious, yep. but I repeat, it's a small project. And um, so by yeah. end of 23, you'll have something built and maybe start welcoming people start at 24. That's pretty good that's, timeline. That, that's the goal. That's the goal. But I don't want to promise anything. If it's yeah, in yeah, 24, uh, it, it's going to be in 24. But uh, 23 is is the goal. And now, we, what have, about, um, we have one and a half years to do that. Powerful. What about investors? So you're going to be taking donations and I'm sure you'll get very, um, a great response, especially as you start to kind of unfold the story. Mm -hmm. Uh, what are your thoughts on taking on like a small group of like a small federation of Bitcoiners who want to fund? Cause I mean, do you have a budget in mind of what you want to spend for land and for phase one construction, let's call it. Um, do you have anything in mind and what are your thoughts on taking on and Cause I think this whole idea of crowdfunding and doing things without crazy legal contracts and without asking for permission, just ba more so based on trust and sort of like a consensus agreement of like, okay, if this amount of money gets sent, this is what it entitles you to. What are your thoughts on taking on investment? Um, and I'd be really curious, like just zoomed out figures, preliminary figures of what you plan to spend on the land and how big the land will be. And then mm -hmm. also like, what are you expecting this thing to cost to build uh, for phase one? Mm -hmm. So um, yes, we, would like to also find investors um but probably we, we are well we cannot have direct investors on the hostel um but we are actually looking to really build even kind of like a, a village or something um so i could imagine to buy a little bit of a bigger piece of land and then on one part we put the hostel and then on the other parts we, we put whatever they want to put um, so that is something we could uh, certainly imagine. And uh, for, for, for the donations, I guess, we, since I want to give everyone something back, uh, we, we're, we're still working on some ideas on, on, on what, but uh, uh, we said, like, probably if you donate this sort of uh, money, uh, you'll get, you know, a free drink. If you donate a little bit more, you get a free night. If you little, cool. donate a little bit even more, you get like a, a week in this in the suite or whatever. Um, and th this is some incentives to also, you know, get help from the community financially, yep. but then also give something back in return. Cool. Um, another another idea we're actually working on is, um, you know, those boring uh, walls of donors where you just have like a list of all the people donating. Oh yeah, cool. Uh, I think I, I, I like think, a monument to who helped build this thing, even down to like small donations and SaaS. That'd yeah, be really but cool. make it make it make it in a in a in a Bitcoin way. Make it like a you know a map of sort of like notes, like inspired by could it even be like the the the, the Lightning Network where you see like bigger donors are the bigger channels, and then smaller donors are like yeah, yeah. single uh, you know smaller ones. And I mean, also for this, we want to make a competition and we want to, you know, get ideas from the community. So, I mean, as you, as you might understand already, it's, it's really something that we want to build from the ground up, even from the idea to, um, to, to develop uh, with everyone. 
And then with the prices of the land, it is you find land for 50,000 euro. Okay. Um, How big are we talking? How, what, is that, what does 50,000 euro get you? 50,000 euro probably gets you in the middle of nowhere, a, a couple of uh, you probably like two hectares or something you, you can get there. Um, but that, that that is already all right. Probably if you want to get into a little bit of a better location, you're going to have to spend up to 200,000. And then construction costs in uh, in Portugal is around a thousand per square meter, thousand euro per square meter. So if you want to build two hundred square meters, that's two hundred thousand plus two hundred thousand from the land, that's four hundred. And additional costs, we're going to end up spending around half a million. Okay, that seems like a. I mean, from a high level view, that's pretty good. And you know obviously to get a place closer to the water and more prime location is more expensive. You're going to pay a lot more, but the whole idea that you can get a place in the middle of nowhere, which could be cool to embed yourself in nature and use that money that you would have spent on like, you know, a cheap bus that helps bring people to and from the ocean. Right. Yeah. And yeah. to me, that's a lot more appealing because you're, it's like you're allowing yourself to have more work to get out of the area like yeah. with your feet or with a vehicle, but you're getting so much more value for the land you purchased if it's in the middle yeah. of a jungle. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that sounds really yeah, so cool. Yeah, so we, we have to, yeah, that's what I, what I also um, said to you initially, that it is, you can see a uh, property online, you can ch check them and you see shitty photos. Yeah. And you, you gotta see go like- there. You um, gotta feel the energy of the land. Yeah, you have to go there and you must like go to some place and say, wow, this hill is amazing. And, yep. you know, the view and fucking, you know, the air is nice and whatever. You can just like fall in love with one single tree or like yep. one old house that it has to be fucking renovated. So it is really hard at this stage to ha have a good pr prediction. Um, we obviously hope to spend as little as possible. We hope to get... Um, as much as possible support from the uh, community design wise and input wise but also financially um, and this is this is going to help us to offer a, a cheap but really memorable memorable place for people to come have a great time and learn about bitcoin and about how to you know change the world dude that's so powerful that sounds awesome <laughs> and we only got 10 minutes left because i only have an hour today but um you know one of the ideas i thought of is like if you did a podcast called Hostel Stories and you literally just had two mics, <laughs> anyone at the hostel could just go there, press a button and it records, you know, we're doing value for value podcasts right now. And people are yeah. paying sats, streaming sats yeah. to listen to cool conversations. And the idea that this is a hub for Bitcoiners that are on their different life paths and they all have their own unique stories. The idea of creating like a podcast is just people shooting the shit and telling their stories in half an hour. I would yeah. listen to every episode and that would be, nice, you know, nice. it's a revenue stream That's... for the hostel. But I think the whole idea that if you've stayed in a lot of hostels and you've handpicked the best things about the best hostels, you will create the world's best hostel because you've literally mm -hmm. crowd and you're going to crowdsource ideas from Bitcoiners who a lot of them have done some sort of traveling rite of passage. So nice. I think there's like so many opportunities to create amazing hostels for a group of people who will be wealthy. So like yeah. you talk about making it cheap, it's like, don't make it cheap. Just make it so that you over deliver on value, right? Yeah. I will pay more for something that I'll pay a bit more for something that's way better. Yeah. And, you know, Bitcoiners will be wealthy. They will be nomadic. Not all yeah. of them will be nomadic, but they will be more flexible in being able to travel and they will yeah. be seeking memorable experiences. And if yeah. you can create a hub that provides memorable experiences and orange pills, people who aren't in Bitcoin and attracts Bitcoiners to go and orange pill the surrounding area, it's like, it's yeah, going to be pretty awesome. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can, I can, like, I, I almost can't wait fucking doing it and seeing this fucking place. And I, yeah. I mean, it's not only about um, building it and about, um, you, you know, getting ideas, but actually the most important thing is like run it then. Like, yeah have a place that is built that can continue to grow but that is built and uh you know just make people have a have a great time and uh yeah i think your your idea i just wrote it down <laughs> making a hostel story podcast is a fucking fucking great uh idea as well and um uh, yeah I, I might do that 
Cool. Well, I've got, I've been doing podcasts for a while and I got spare equipment. So if and when this does happen, I'll come and donate some equipment and help oh. out with the setup because getting, well. you know, there is like a stack to set up of like, how do you plug this into a node? And, and on another note, like I know people that have more Bitcoin than they know what to do with. And all I have to do is bring them a project that gets them super hyped that they know that the funds are with a trust, trusted fiduciary, someone who's mm. going to be a good steward and is mm. actually going to put things in place that are good for the world of Bitcoin. And the yes. idea of putting a couple uh, miners, like cr plugging in a couple S19s to show people mm. what mining is in person and also generate sats to fund the operation, super mm. badass. Have a cool. podcast that generates sats based on people just telling their stories. Mm. Um, that's a good revenue source. Nice. And, you know, just... There's so many ways to do this. And I like the idea that you said where it's like, okay, we build the hostel here. And maybe you like literally just say, this is how much it is for a shipping container um, on this piece of land. You know, you get to like, anyway, I won't, I won't keep going, but there's so many. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I mean, I, li I like getting this input because I mean, uh, we get information from so many sorts of people and um, it's, it's just uh, also, if I can say one more thing on this competitions, uh, one guy actually um, got really kind of angry, and I, you know, I posted the competition, and I and I said, you know, first prize is three hundred thousand sets, second is a th uh, is a hundred thousand, third is fifty uh, thousand. And this one guy, he is like an artist, and uh, he told me, man, that's a ripoff. It's it's uh, competitions. No one should do competitions, and no artist should should do this, and. Uh, it's 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 really it's really bad and you, I mean, you got triggered it's okay uh, those people uh, can don't participate and <laughs> I actually I, I i i talked to him then and i wanted to understand why do you think so because mm. this is actually an 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 open competition where everyone can participate and it's not like right. um we only pay people that like do this for a living and right. it's um, meritocracy it's it's i mean in the end one venezuelan guy won this thing and it's like a, i mean translated into into euro or into euro is like a 120 euro it's kind of like a week of um of work over there so that's a lot of probably money. more and it's yeah. also the world's hardest money and it's yeah. not in venezuelan and, boulevards which lose value by the day it yeah. seems so and i mean it's it's, it's yeah. like a free market but i i explained uh, this thing to him and i he also gave me some really good inputs on how to make it a little bit better and I was curious on, on, on how to make it. And I'm, I definitely, I'm not going to make the competition like it was before. And I, I'm going to take his input into con consideration. And in the end, he was, he was so hyped that he said, man, sorry for this bullshit before. <laughs> he, he, deleted, he deleted all the, all the bullshit tweets. And uh, like, I didn't ask him to do that. I said, well, no, leave, leave it there. So we can yeah. have a conversation about it. He, he deleted it and he sent me some sets. Yeah. So you're the right person to do this project because just the notion that you immediately sought to understand his perspective instead of just discounting him or shit talking him. It's like, yeah. you are the kind of person that is going to be able to execute this. You're an architect. You seem to have a pretty well-rounded vision. Um, this is why people will support you. This is why people will send randomly send you large amounts of sats in future <laughs> as you explain this. I think the biggest thing, my biggest nugget, take it for what, what it is, if you want it or not, involve people in the process. Um, yeah. Just really tell the story authentically of the stages you're going through, even like the challenges, like, yeah. you know, the, the hardest challenges, explain them. And, you know, if you want to start building this podcast, you know, I'm happy. I, I do podcasts for the stoa because I just love talking to people. And if I can <laughs> share the conversation and one person who listens gets inspired, then the work of me posting it is well spent. Nice. Um, so, you know, if you want to do a monthly podcast and just air out feedback you're getting, it's almost like um, a record of the evolution. Yeah. Right? So if people want to hear the story, not just like the current episode, but they want to know like, okay, well, maybe there's 21 episodes of how to build a Bitcoin hostel yeah. and you do once a month. Like I'm happy to do once a month. I already have the recording gear. I can post it and you can have all the raw content to do with it, what you want. But awesome. I want to keep a pulse on this project as you go through it. Um, awesome. It sounds really interesting. I think it's going to resonate cool. with a lot of Bitcoiners and uh, thank you for the work you're doing. Like this won't be an easy well, thing well, to do, you. but it will be thank you for inviting meaningful. Me. Nice, nice. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. I appreciate your words. I appreciate your invite. I appreciate everything you're also doing. 
and uh yeah th thanks a lot you're welcome i look forward to the next chat maybe i'll put a i'll put a notice on my calendar for like a couple months we'll do another one if you're keen awesome cool yeah um, yeah um again i i, I hate uh, to do this but um i have to ask uh, for for all sorts of support also financially and um yeah Th so bitcoin ho bitcoin underscore hostel for anyone who's listening and wants to check this out there is a link to your tally coin to receive donations and uh so people would just dm you they can donate to the tally coin they can go to your website which is also listed in your twitter bio um the twitter bio is we crowd design build and fund europe's first bitcoin hostel a hub for a hub to teach locals and travelers about the future of money i think that alone is like <laughs> you'll get some support and you already it sounds like you already have been so you're doing you're doing it right cool awesome awesome dude so for everyone listening well i guess albert thank you for joining us today at the bitcoin stoa to everyone listening Thanks for being here. If you enjoyed the conversation, you can support this project by heading to bitcoinstoa.com and sending some stats to the QR code on our homepage. You can also head to Bitcoin underscore hostel and donate or support or message and give input to Albert. He sounds like he's very open minded. And uh, yeah, I look forward to seeing how this unrolls. To everyone listening, have a wonderful day and we'll talk to you later. Nick, thanks. Thanks for the invite. You're very welcome.